Dude, I mentioned I love bagels, guys, because they're really good. They're like, really good. Alright. And yeah, I definitely, I definitely want to use the draw and train more often, guys. It's just, uh, um, there's not always opportunities. That's all. I, I use it when it's when it's applicable, but uh, there's not always talking about direction and stuff like that. So, I promise a little bit more. Hey, little bit. This is Virgin. I'm bringing you guys a best of three. This is for the Gosu League qualifier for Tier One to replace the teams that have disbanded. So, um. Esgosu has disbanded, which means that they opened up a slot, and I think DTS actually also, I think, I don't know who got the invite from DTS, since DTS also disbanded. I'm not sure how that's working out, but either way, this best of three determines who gets into the Gosu League. We just saw Dare play against Empire in Star Series literally 20 minutes ago, or 30 minutes ago now. So we totally, we totally do know uh, that Dare has it in them to take out Empire, and Empire's a pretty new team, so... Um, it's, it's basically DTS's choiciest members joining Dare and their less choicy members joining Empire. So it's like old teammates playing against each other, plus Artstyle in the mix and G, obviously, who's just a super good player. So, um, bans so far. We see Darkseer, Broodmother, Lycan, Nature's Prophet, same as we saw last last game. I think there's a Broodmother ban first round, I'm pretty sure. Ten seconds remaining. Um... It's going to see a left strike ban as well from Dare, so they do not want to go for the same strat. By the way, they picked uh, Trio Protector last game. If you guys haven't seen the VOD, go find it. I'm going to post it on YouTube for sure, because it's Trio Protector, right? Right? Um, and one more ban from Empire. So we still have a Chen Enchant. We still have an Invoker. We still have a Windrunner. Probably won't be banned first round. Very uncommon to see Windrunner banned first round now. Um, lots of good possibilities, though. Uh, they drafted that Weaver last game, didn't really work out though. They wanted some early game viability, but the, the, laning, the laning didn't work as well for them as, as it probably needed to for them to take the win. Hey, Wagon Mama just got here. Yes. Trying to cast out crests with them, but I didn't do a very good job of uh, communicating this morning. Sorry, I was pretty lazy. Slept in, felt great, and then it was like, oh, I have to cast in five minutes. Crap. I guess I have to do that now. That's pretty much what happened. Alright, um, last band was a Pandaria Brewmaster out of Empire. First pick from Dare is going to be an Invoker. They spent a lot of time on that, actually. They uh, picked away their choices, and they said, well, I guess we're going to band out a Panda. So what this actually does is kind of puts Empire in a weird spot. They were probably hoping to pick up a Chen, but if they grab Chen and Tide or something like that, Dare could counterpick with an Enchant. So arguably, uh, Dare on the upper hand at the moment. Um, down to 49 seconds though, they definitely need to draft sooner than later. Uh, I think they could also, what, what Empire could do in this case, they could go Enchant and Tide or something like that. They could do like Enchant Tide or Enchant Windrunner. That way it does the same thing back to Dare. They can say, well fine, if you, if you, we're gonna see if you pick Chen, we'll pick Enchant and we'll try to counter you. They're gonna grab an Enigma and a Windrunner though. So they grab neither a Chen or an Enchant, so the hand goes back on the other foot, or what, <laughs> the hand goes on the foot. You guys wear feet on your hands, right? Um, the shoe goes back on the other foot. It's on the other hand, is what I meant to say. I put, I took like two, two things that involved the body parts and just jammed them together without doing either one correct. That's what I did there. So, um, Dare going with possibly a Chen. Chen or Enchant are the magic heroes that have not been drafted yet. You usually do get banned first round. Last game they got banned first round. I think it was a, instead of the Leshrac Panda, there was a Chen Enchant on one of the teams. That's, or on either of the teams banned out, so something like that. 
So it's it's going to come down to who grabs the enchanted, who grabs the enchant. I'd be super surprised if neither one made it in the first round. It's going to be an enchant from Dare and a Chen. Are you serious? No way. What? Are so you going to do this to me twice in one day? Do weird stuff? I mean, first they pick the Tree of Protector, which is not that weird. And then they go for an enchant Chen. Don't tell me they're going to lay in Chen. Just don't, don't even go there. There's no... They could lane enchant, actually, is what they could do. If they really... They could lane enchant. It'd be weird, but it's possible. I'd be really surprised. Um... I, I guess... I guess they're, they might do a double jungle. It's possible. They could do one aggressive jungle, they could one, do one defensive jungle, and then have three soul lights. That's a possibility. It's not something I've seen before. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen both on the same team. Is the scoreboard not updated? The scoreboard's updated, I think. Dare versus Empire. Yeah, it looks good to me. I don't know what's wrong with it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going with. Um, uh, we're going to see Death Prophet ban out of Dare and a Klinks as well. Um, Jackal does like playing Klinks a lot, so his allies are probably like, okay, okay. He loves he loves Klinks. And to point out, this is the main reason they ban out Klinks. Not only does Jackal and old DTS like using Klinks a lot, but they have a Chen and an Enchant. So that would mean they have double amount of creeps there at all times to steal HP from. Where Klinks could walk up, use his ulti, get bonus damage, and then do do good or do um, good output and damage. So um, smart ban there. I think that's very smart. Uh, Lone Drew is also banned by Empire, saying like, okay, we we you already have Chen and Enchantress. We don't want to see you do um, even more serious amounts of damage. And Wagamama talking about solo mid Chen with a level of eight insta kill with new. It's definitely possible. Um, this is more, this is a pub build. I actually got a message about this the other day, where someone was like, oh, this is how I play Chen. I go for. Uh, Penitence, Test of Faith, Max, and it's like, well, I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's it's not that good. Like, it's not really worth doing. Everybody uses it as pushing. I mean, we could see it. It's a possibility against the Queen of Pain. Oh my, are you serious? Art style. Why you gotta? Why you gotta do this to me? Oh my god. Okay, so in case this wasn't weird enough, guys. First, we see an Enchant and a Chen pickup, and now we're gonna see Triumph. I think they're pushing. I think they're pushing this game. They're going to ban out Pugna. They learned their lesson from the last game, where Pugna was picked up as their solo mid, and that was very, very strong for them. I, man, I can't even. I'm real. I'm so confused about this game. I, as I guess we're going to see maybe a solo mid Chen. If he picks up the last fast level eight, he's got huge killing potential. Test of Fate does pure damage somewhere between 200 and 400. Penitence, I believe, decreases your resistance to something by like 36 percent, I believe. Uh, yeah, 9% per level, I believe. So, reduces your movement speed and your resistance by 36%. That means Test of Faith can do a huge nuke. And then allies on top of that, we're talking about big damage. So, um, it's a possibility. I'd be surprised, but it's definitely doable. And Earthshaker is going to be the next pickup for their team. And a nice a Night Stalker. Great pickup for their last pick. They really needed somebody that could pull them all together and possibly dive a little bit better. I mean, they have strong and interesting heroes, but I think a Night Stalker is very wise, especially with the diving strat. If it's nighttime, you can, of course, push forward as a Night Stalker, run past the tower, initiate. Downside is that Night Stalker wants to make a knight, and Shrewd Protector's aura only works during the daytime. But if they're five-man pushing a lane anyways, it doesn't even matter. So, man, this game, what is going on today? Uh, one more pick from Empire. They need more counter push. They have a Windrunner currently. They have an Earthshaker Fissure. They're going to have a lot of Chen Creeps is the scary part, so with that many Chen Creeps, it's going to be tough to push in no matter what. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Venomancer. Um, Venomancer is going to be drafted next for the Dire team. That is going to be more counter push for them. Very smart support. i got to stop reading chat. It is distracting me. Ugh. Um, so yeah, I think Venomancer is a great hero choice there for Empire. It's going to fit into their strat nice. Um, they'll have good damage from it. They can stack wards up. If they can get Venomancer to level 7 relatively fast, that would be great for him. And it actually looks like they will be able to do that. Look at their heroes. They have a Veno, an Earthshaker, and an Enigma. What, an Enigma is obviously most likely going to be jungling, and then hopefully we'll see like a Venomancer, Earthshaker dueling. Or maybe we'll see like Earthshaker, Windrunner, bottom. That would be really cool, actually. Earthshaker, Windrunner, bottom. Put Veno solo top with Enigma up there and a Windrunner. If Veno can get to 7 really, really fast, 
that would be extremely important for the Dire Team. But it looks like he is going to buy wards, so I guess he's going to be... I don't know if he's going to be soloing or not. We'll see. Um, I would like to see him solo, perhaps, to get a lot of really fast EXP. If he can get up his 7 fast, and he can pick up his ulti, maybe level 8, he can defend pushes pretty well. Because at least then, you ulti all those creeps, they take 10 damage, or like a bunch of damage per second. Was it 30 or something? Uh, 36 damage per second for 12 seconds. That's a lot of damage output. That's like 400 magic damage, and uh, could slow down the push a lot. Alright. So let's go over the players quick. We have G Plane, H Trio Protector again, going Basilius first actually with the Tango. Uh where is Funic? Yes. Um 333 is Goblin or Go Black playing Chen. We have Art Style playing Enchantress. Is he gonna be laning for sure? Very, very weird item build, but it looks like he's gonna be playing on the top lane. Uh are they gonna do like I guess they're just gonna try to take this tower super fast or something. Uh, Night Sarker's going mid on Funic, and bot lane is M, Mag, Plane, Invoker. It's one of the best Invoker players, seriously, guys. He is so good at Invoker. Dire Team, we have J4 playing the Venomancer, we have Blow Your Brain playing Queen of Pain, Scandal playing Windrunner, and then we have Always Wanna Fly playing Enigma, and finally, Jackal playing Earthshaker. That's Team Empire versus Team Dare. Dare's already won one game today. But what is going on? We see a rune spawn bottom, and... It, I'm sorry, it doesn't spawn yet, sorry. Haste rune bottom. So it looks like Venomancer is supporting mid, perhaps, uh, or I guess Queen of Pain's going bottom. Queen of Pain's going solo against M, the Invoker. Haste. Venomancer grabs the Haste, he is playing a support role. And Enigma obviously jungling. Are they going to have a farming Earthshaker? Okay, so that this is DTS's spot, so since both teams got we're members from DTS, whoever wins this gets their spot. That's a really cool way to do it, I like that decision. Very cool, cool stuff. Jackal's getting farmed in the top lane, guys. Four teams will play for the Isco Two spot tomorrow. So we see Gale on top of Triant. He does have his living armor, but it's not a ton of survivability. Chen's coming through, though. He's going to have a Dark Troll Warlord net. And now a little bit of right-click going on. There's the Fissure, but he's going to survive. I can't believe Jackal... First of all, Jackal's playing Earthshaker, and second of all, Jackal is getting farmed this game. This is, like, the weirdest game ever. Our cell is going to mess with Enigma's farm here. Picking up a fast Ursa Warrior is definitely going to be great towards shutting that down. Uh, he wants to deny this Clarity Potion if possible. Let's check out his vision there. Dancing, doing the dance. He's actually not going to deny the Clarity, but Artstell does have vision of him, but he's not too worried about it, I guess. I, I don't know why he doesn't throw at least one spear on him. Could have cost him like 100 mana, but... Very weird game so far. G, level 1 now. He's got good armor, plus 4 from his aura as well as his Ring of Basilius, but he's got to be really careful about this dual lane. Here's the pings as now we see Chen uh, cutting creeps a little bit using some Skeleton Warriors. Art style coming forward as well. And there's the nukes that are going to land. We're going to see a clap from the Chen creep and or, from the Ursa Warrior. And that wave is gone. The wards go down and now the diving is going to happen. And they're going to back off here. They're going to trap themselves in. They can put a, a Plague Ward right here. Yep, there it is. Plague Ward goes down. It's only got 75 HP though. Art style is going to make a little bit of a mistake. Eats one tango. Takes two hits. And now pushing on the tower. Luckily their Ursa is going to take the prime of, uh, amount of the damage here. But very, very little chance that they can defend this here. Now the Shockwave continuing to be used. He's going to enchant a regular creep, but... Man, the jungling power of an enchant and a Chen right now is just ridiculous. And both of these two heroes are... Oh, I love this. Very smart play. Do they spot it? They know that they have to get out of there. The dive is going to happen as soon as this tower dies. Are they out of Tangos, though? They are out of Tangos, and here comes the dive. They're like, alright, let's kill him. Uh, the search begins. Empire, scared for their lives. They know that they are completely trapped. They're looking for the kill. They said ping over here. Oh, the melee creep. The creep. Here comes the creep. They're spotted. They're in trouble. There's the fissure. There's the sun strike as well. They're blocked in completely. They are so screwed right now. At the very least, if this creep dies, they won't have vision, but there is the leech seed. He goes down. First blood happens on the Earthshaker. Art saw a little blocked in, but Venomancer, I don't think he's going to get the kill. There's the test of fate. Double kill picked up, and Dare takes an early advantage. <laughs> they found them. Alright, Jackal's showing up level 2 currently. We have Night Stalker, level 4 in the mid lane versus Scandal. Scandal 15 and 2 with a fast bottle up. 11 last hits on Night Stalker, not bad. Bot lane is M playing the Invoker. He's up to 3 and 2. He's got nothing. He's got 2 assists though. 8 and 4 in the Queen of Pain. So he's had a really tough time so far. But Queen of Pain is huge base damage, guys. Look at this. Um, 64 damage right now with 4 Iron Red Branches. The base damage is so high. It's so much, so easy for her to last hit, outlast hit people in lane. So the pushing continues, Living Armor obviously giving some nice um, HP levels to everybody on the map as the Plague Wards are trying to slow things down, but Venomancer is still only level 2 here, might see a Leech Seed, Leech Seed will get casted actually, 
Gonna do a little bit of damage to G, but he's gonna heal up a slight amount as well as the Fisher lands by Jackal. Couple more right clicks from him as he's gonna back off. They might be in some trouble now. Gonna have to dive this tower or get out of the tower as he does pick up the catapult at least. So not bad for Dare so far. One, make sure to keep in mind, guys, every time that he steals a creep with enchant, that's EXP that they're not gonna get. So they are gonna get a little bit less EXP as a result from that. But Chen is gonna pick up another Seder Hellcaller clear up the creep wave level 4 now we'll see what he goes for next yeah he's gonna max out holy persuasion and test of faith going the typical chen build art cell doing something similar a couple more right clicks going on the tower actually trying to pick this off if possible as art cell overstating his welcome a little bit but now going on jackal there's a couple nukes no uh no lead seed up for trio protector at least but once again with that basilius up really fast there they give such big armor auras to all of their heroes so really really effective towards them as the satyr still doing a little bit more damage to the tower g comes forward Tower down to about 300 HP. Jackal has one more Fissure, which he will land down on G. Actually, this could be death for G. We'll see. Nope. Uh, Arcel picks up the damage instead. They're going to have to back up from this now. They, they just can't stay. Well, they've actually got really good regen, though. Um, they've got 2 HP from Living Armor. The Seder Hellcaller currently gives 4 HP regen per second. If they are able to pick up like a, a Hedros on top of that, we're talking about like 10 HP per second in AoE, at least to the heroes. A little bit less to the players. This scandal actually TPs the top lane, trying to slow things down. We have a Harpy Storm that's going to clean up this wave using that lightning. It is pretty low cooldown, actually. It's a pretty cool spell. A little bit of Malefice goes down on Harpy Storm, or I'm sorry, on the Chen, as well as a Power Shot and the Shackle to stop him down, and they do pick up a kill. So first kill goes to Empire here, with Chen falling down. Oh, F is on the high ground. Pops the Illusion. He wants this kill. There's the Void being used. He's level 5 and going to do a little bit of blocking. Good damage being done as well. He does have cooldown in 3 seconds here. There's a second stun, and here comes the damage. Void is... is oh, the Shackle lands. Phonic is going to get stunned, and Enigma is going to end up surviving. Big damage on the Night Stalker now. It's not nighttime quite yet as he takes another power shot. Eidolon's come through. Nice little block there. He's in a lot of trouble. A couple more last hits. Windrun is used. He's popping bottle to get a little bit of heal up between bursts. And there's another nuke going down. It's almost nighttime. It's so close. There's the shackle. No leech seed mana. But he's got the armor. He's got the heal now. And Night Stalker barely survives that one. Armor surely making a difference. The scandal now in some trouble. A couple more right clicks on him by G. And G is about 10 mana away from being happy and ready to go. And they go back in the jungle. Soul Ring used. And probably see some tango pops as well. Such a weird game so far. Such high aggression. It's finally nighttime, so Trion Protector's aura is no longer being applied to anyone else but himself. But they have Night Stalker, who's now very fast. Actually lost a lot of advantage going for that top gank and only grabbing one hero. But he will be able to find a DD on the bot lane. He's got 20 last hits. Let's look at the gold graph. It's a 1.5k gold advantage just from the tower and a little bit of a kill. I think that was first blood gold plus a little bit of last hits. Um, once again, M on the bot lane now, level 6. He also grabbed a Basilius, interesting choice. But he's got free farm now. Not sure why the early game went so badly for him, but we'll blame it on Queen of Pain having excellent base animation, or base damage and animation. 74 plus 3 with just a null talisman. Very strong last hits. So, Windrun is going to find that double damage. Did he really not bottle that? He did not bottle it. Wow. I thought for sure he was going to grab that DD, but he did not. Scandal picks it up, so Windrunner with the DD now. He would have loved to have that one. Uh, three levels of Hunter in the night as well, and he's going to move out, going for some kills. So he's got good movement speed. Shackle lands on M. Oh, man, he's going to get picked off. Double damage, help, surely helping out there. Double damage, picking off the Invoker with the Queen of Pain. And that was just a level 6 Queen of Pain. No ulti picked up yet. We'll see if she grabs it at 7 or just waits till level 8. It's a possibility. Arcane Boots are up on Chen now. He's, he's doing a little bit of jungling. I think they really expected to have this tower down, but... Um, the defense came from Empire. They brought the heroes up, and they were able to defend it. It's a bot tower not taking the damage. Scandal still hitting very hard with that double damage rune. Have to be very careful here. And 333, picking up some more creeps. The level 5 currently. Probably wants it at 6 pretty fast here, so that they can have the heal for all the creeps. I don't know if it heals in chance creeps as well, actually, now that I think about it. I wonder if it does. Might just be Chen ones. Probably just checks who has the Holy Persuasion and heals them. Might see more dive on M here as Scandals. Oh, there's the Shackle Shot. Power Shot as well. There's the Blink ulti as well. M's in some trouble. Dagger as well. Puts the Cold Snap down, but he does get picked off. Great execution from Empire there. Picking off Invoker again. But Tree Protector kills Urshik on the top lane, and the tower is down. Always want to fly. Thinking about popping the Black Hole, but he is absolutely screwed here. Eidolon's doing some great damage to G, actually, as he runs away from them. Takes some good hits as the heal from Artstyle. Might keep them up. Trying to get some heals up. Might actually... No, he's going to be okay. Pretty low, though. There's the urn from Artstyle, waiting for that to end, and a big heal for Dare now. At the at the very least, they have been able to shut down Invoker. Invoker now died twice, two assists on him. He's got Cold Snap up, three levels of Exhort, two levels of Quas. So, at the very least, Empire has that advantage that Invoker is not doing so hot. But um, the gold advantage on Dare is is still looking very good. Look, Venomancer has very very little heal this game. They have a Night Stalker, which means 
the rest of the game is going to be scary for them, especially it's still not even halfway through nighttime, and they could basically just hardcore push, because if they come to defend this, Night Stalker's always going to be ready to dive it. So the push continues. Uh, tower is going to be last hit as Night Stalker comes forward, thinking about initiating. He still doesn't have fear yet, probably needs to pick one up the next level, especially against the Queen of Pain. Silence against him is absolutely invaluable. And even Chen just casually put, pushing the bot lane. Just casually. TP supports coming. It's going to be Scandal looking for a Shackle shot. Could latch it here. We'll see. Here comes the Shackle. It's going on. The Dark Troll does not latch a little bit off as we see Blurry Brain come forward. Dagger as well. Uh, he looks pretty dead. Could pop his heal, but I think he's pretty much screwed. Might know he's going to pop the heal, so does pop the heal. Looking for disables on the Windrunner. Could have a blink from Queen of Pain in a second. That'll be his death shackle. Here comes the Scream of Pain. Gets the kill, but looking for Cold Snap. Nothing. Cold Snap on Blurry Brain. Leech Seed as well, and that's going to be his death, I think. Gets picked off. A little bit of right click as Scandal now running away from M. And we'll have a Invoke, picks up a second level of Invoke now, running through the jungle. I don't think he's going to be able to be caught. Actually, Night Stalker coming. Vitality Booster is up, and I think they gave up on the dive. Uh, but he is going for blood. Oh, there's the vision. So he does see him. Coming after Scandal now. Does Scandal see? Scandal now sees. There's the Sun Strike. Does the damage. Big nukes on top of him. No more regen. He actually has a 7 charge wand at least, but a little bit of cooldown here. And I think F is going to be able to get the kill. We'll see Gale at least. Does dodge the Gale. Great dodge by Funic. That was such a good play. Dodges that Gale and does pick off the Windrunner as the bot lane also being dove on. Enigma gets picked off by Trim Protector. Actually, we can see G use his ulti there. Overgrowth on Jackal and a little bit of right click. Pops his ulti at least, but gets picked off. And Art Cell popping his heal. Three levels of heal here with that earn up as G decides to go aggressive. Here comes the Leech Seed. Leech Seed being used. He's healing up. Ends up surviving again. An earn being used, but it's going to get canceled by the dagger. A little bit of a mistake there from Art Cell, but they've got two more charges. Doesn't even matter. And huge aggression coming out of Dare continuously. Even picked up an early Nature's Guise this time. Obviously did go for that max living armor again, but uh, only two levels of Leech Seed. As we see a self pop up by G, so he's going to heal back up to full here, unless he takes a little bit of damage, but he'll probably be fine, so... Going for the same build, Headdress. The only difference this game is he does have that Basilius Ring. Invoker actually pretty under farm this game, didn't do as well. Oh, Cold Tap and always want to fly. Empitess as well, Sun Strike. He pawns, spawns, Eidolons, might be trapped in by uh, the Earthshaker Fissure, but it looks like Venomancer about to get right clicked down. He does get picked off Vanguard up on Night Stalker, so survivable at this point. And more right clicks as Jackal drops and Dare continues their aggression. Queen of Pain backs off, double kill. Power Shot's gonna miss. I love this fast Vanguard, by the, by the way, guys. Just absolutely skipped treads, skipped his face boots. He's all about the regen, all about the HP and the diving. Such smart item builds on all these heroes. Art still, or I'm sorry, Night Stalker still has not picked up his uh, Crippling Fury up. He's totally okay with that. Might dive again. More nukes going down. They're going to have to heal this up. Art Stealth still healing. Chen Creep's pushing up. Got a Centaur up here as well as a Wildkin. Huge armor bonus going on their allies. They're just tanking the tower, taking 30 damage. There's Shackle Lines and Art Stealth. Heal popped as well by Chen as we see a nuke on Venom. Venom might get picked off. Overgrowth still in cooldown. And Leech Seed is used. Sunstrike's actually hit on two. Dare on G as well. Cool on for the mech as the, the uh, Centaur is going to come forward and pull back the creep wave, but they're just going to right click this tower very, very easily. Funic with the last hit. Nope, Enchantress picks it up. Arcel healing up again with the uh, Urn. Urn, one of the best early game pushing items ever, guys. If you ever want to do a strat like this, Urn is the way to go. And guys, let's point out this is 12 minutes. 12 minute game right now. Here comes the Rax pressure. So they push up, going on Enigma, he ends up, oh man, he used his urn and now he's easily killed. Big mistake from Always Wanna Fly, way too far forward. Venomancer as well, being pursued, Overgrowth used on three, catching three on Jackal, Sunstrike. It is going to land on Jackal, a couple more last hits. F gets the last hit, more impetus on Scandal as he does back off with the wind run. Dare continuing their push. Power Shot doing big damage, getting three last hits there. Huge gold advantage now for Windrunner, at least nice pickup there. Is their arcane boots are literally not enough. How many arcanes they have? Two arcanes, three arcanes, three arcanes, and they're still out of mana. This game, pretty funny game. Pushing for Blurry Rain does do a scream of pain at least. G taking a Malphus is going to back off. Shackle lands on him. This could be his death here. He's going to have a mech pop at least. Pops the mech. Power shot lands, but the fissure as well. Chaining things up. Puts the leech seed down, but it's not going to be off a little bit too late there. And Dare finally is going to have to back off. Oh, well, Queen of Pain blinks in. Big mistake there. Pays for that was Jackal's looking for the Echo Slam. Puts the Echo down. Feared as well. A little bit late by the by F at least. This is another Sun Strike splitting damage all over the place. F doing some nukes and low HP. He is regening up with his Quas though. Gale is not going to land his Art Cell now. Running away. Arcane Boots come. And uh, he's going to heal in about 25 mana. As M is just going to TP from out of this. F picks off the Venomancer. At least might want a second kill. It's going to eat a Malphus. Uh, always on fly. Maybe get a black hole. He's actually out of mana here. More impetus. F looking for a nuke. Pops his wand. And it's going to be for always on a fly there. One hit. 
And a nuke. Double kill now for Night Stalker. 20 to 5. What does this gold graph look like? 12k shackle lands on Art Cell, but Power Shot doing the damage. Spreads it out a little bit here as Art Cell is going to pop an urn. Juking into the trees. I don't necessarily agree with this choice to run this way. He doesn't have any tangos, actually. He's going to pay for this one. And we're going to see one Power Shot at least, but the shackle's going to latch. Slight mistake for Art Cell. Was not smart to juke. I think he's a little worried about a Queen of Pain blink. Maybe he's like, oh, I'm going to die anyways. So I'll try juking through here, but. Not quite sure. It even sings up a little bit. That'll see the gold graph bounce, or the EXP graph bounce back a little bit, but look at this EXP difference right now. Huge advantage going for Derry. He's going to pick up a Staff of Wizardry next. Dag on our force. Give me one. Probably going to be forced, though. Um, he keeps getting... Once you're out of position as a tree out, there's not a lot of ways to save yourself, so... I think the uh, a force Staff would be a smart choice. Art still going straight for an Agonim Scepter. Going, uh, just skipping Point Booster, actually. Going for the stats instead. 333, gonna pick up some new creeps. Necro level 1 at the moment, but he's got 3, he's good to go. Can totally push. His dares G is gonna go to the bot lane. Try to slow down the push from Queen of Pain, and he totally can do this. He's got such good regen right now. He's got like 8 natural regen from his items and his abilities. He's just going straight for the range creeps. Queen of Pain blinks out. He's like, oh, don't wanna mess with that. And who do we have top? It's actually Funic. We'll going for an Ogre Club next. It's daytime. His ulti is on cooldown, so this is gonna threaten their push a little bit. Dare would have liked to grab a Rax there at that first nighttime. They will continue pushing. Oh man, they almost got it too. If they would have taken that tower out, they could have stayed for a lot longer. But so they missed their first timing window. They wanted to take a Rax right there and then, and they they almost did, but then they just weren't able to. Made us a, a little bit of a mistake there from the. Uh, from G, so fun at coming forward there. A little bit of damage on Always Want to Fly, just soaring up on him as the tornado goes down to pressure the mid lane. Uh, Plague Wards are level three, so doing a decent job of slowing things down. But Power Shot also, I don't think it's gonna be enough. Dark Troll Warlord gonna have to back off being micro as they're hitting the tower from all over. Art Cell does not latch the shackle. He's gonna have to pop his heal here. Heal goes up. A little bit of a uh, range damage going on. Empire. Oh, another great Power Shot. Ulti Mech heals him up just in time, and they are still healing up. Art Cell may survive. It's gonna be close. He ends up healing. Chance heal comes through at just the right time. Pops the earth as well. Shackle ends at Art Cell. And blow your brain is taken out immediately. Venomancer TP's in. Pops his ulti. Venomancer finally. I'm sorry. Enchantress finally goes down there, but the heals were a huge. I'm on the high ground there, trying to do some damage to Scandals. The Venomancer ulti still doing big damage to all of their heroes, but Tower is about to go down. We're going to see at least Seed up on G, which is going to give him some nice heal up. But Tower gets picked off. Invoker with the last hit. Drum of Endurance is up. 3, 2, and 17 on Invoker. Are you kidding me? What have you been doing this game, M? He's been everywhere. 17 assists. That is crazy. Now, Dare is pressuring forward a little bit. I think they're going to try to take a Rax. A little surprised they aren't going for the bot one since it is so low, but they're going for it. Echo Slam lands, picks off the Trio Protector just as I look away. Sorry about that, guys. Soaring up on Earthshaker. And that is going to stop their push. Gets a lot of kills there. Picks off Trio Protector. Just murders him. He buys back, though. Uh, buyback costing him about 500 gold, but for good reason. They want to end this game. They can definitely do it. Echo Slam's on cooldown anyways, and now it is. There's Nighttime. Um, puts the fear down on Queen of Pain as well, but a great Fissure from Earthshaker. And the Test of Faith, Sun Strike, that gets the kill. Chen with the last hit. So we'll pressure forward, trying to grab the Enigma. Actually, yeah, they're continuing this, pushing on. And a couple more right clicks. Right clicks as well from Invoker, does big damage. Nice Stalker with a godlike streak. Funnick playing so well. This game is Art Cell actually taking a ton of tower damage. Mech goes down by GD, healing back up. Look at this, 13 HP per second. They hit this Hellcaller, plus the mech, plus the Trion Protector. Such huge HP regen. 13 per second on heal. Nice Stalker at 20 per second. His Aghanim Scepter is on the way. He's going to have an Aghanim Scepter at 17 minutes as they push forward. Going for the mid racks. There's the Fissure Block from Jackal that will buy them a little bit of time. The Fissure will block, uh, run out in about 8 seconds here, and then they're going to push up to the hill. And here comes the push back up. Power Shot still trying to lower things down, but Art Sale still healing up here. Shackle does not latch as the tower is taking the damage. Oh, Fissure block again. And now F is actually on the wrong side of the Fissure. Oh, he does barely squeak through. Fissure just slightly out of place. And it's going to slow down their pushes continuously here. Another lead seed to heal everybody back up. Oh, man, the heals in this lineup is ridiculous. Another scream of pain goes down. Wildkin. Very, very low HP, but the armor that he's applying is nice. And now their, chat, their creeps are all gone. Is the idol is taking more damage. G actually in a little bit of trouble. Pops his mech again to heal back up. It's so hard to push up the hill with this Plague Wards up. Plague Wards making the difference. Queen of Pain as well with those AoEs and Eidolons also doing some nice job. They have such good counter pushing here. If they had any other lineup, they would it would just be done. G is getting healed up again. Enchantress level 10 here. It is daytime actually. So daytime on the Night Stalker. Not the best situation as 333 is going to pick up some mutuals. Level 2 Necronomicon picks up the Wildkin. And they're starting to say, okay, this is, this is tough. Let's just take the Bot Tower. Bot Tower is down to 200 HP. 
The downside is that the wave on the bottom, it, it is actually just starting to push, which is great. So they will be able to make this happen pretty faster. 2100 gold for Invoker, probably going to be a 4 staff, I assume. And Dare is going to back off. They're saying, okay, this isn't working. They're defending this push. Gold Graph is sitting about level, so it could get bad for Dare if this doesn't end up working. Oh, they're just going to back off and go for the Roshan. Cool choice here. Armor levels are huge. Look at this. Plus 10 armor. That's for Invoker. Plus 9 on the Chen. They, they basically have 9 armor from the Wild King, from the Basilius. From the Living Armor. And Tornado on the High Ground. I love this. Able to scout out Scandal here. But they are right clicking the Roshan. And I don't think there's anything that Empire can do to stop this. As Enigmas on the High Ground could maybe run in Black Hole, but... With Chen on the high ground, he's ready to spot things out. Can always send people back with Holy Persuasion. Gets picked down. Night Stalker with the Aegis. Shackle is not going to latch. They take another gold advantage as Arth Cell. It's going to put a slow in Enigma. He's going to try to TP out. Is he going to get stunned? Uh, nothing. Nothing to stop him. So good TP out. Would have died otherwise, I believe. And G up to 1k gold. As Volier Brain's going to finally do a little bit of counter pushing. Trying to take a tier 1 tower, doing as much damage as possible. Great play here. Tanking up the creep wave. Oh, love this. Three Null Talisman plus Treads. He knows that he needs as much early game strength as possible, and this is the best way to do it. Just grab stat items, guys, if you're worried about somebody ending the game at 20 minutes. So he's going to TP back. Slight gold advantage going back to Empire. Very smart that he just took that. And healing back up, so... A little bit of gold might buy them enough. Oh, that's the Blank Dagger for Earthshaker. This could be it. He's got the smoke up. He's thinking about going in. Here he comes. He's thinking about it. Where is he going to go in? There's the Shackle latching. He's hit, did pop vision yet, and he's he's still thinking of an opportunity. Venomancer is picked off. Everybody's a little bit too grouped up. Tower goes down though, and here he might jump in. This could be it. There's not that many creeps there. Still hasn't jumped in. Takes a little bit of fear from the Night Stark as well as the Nuke. They are seriously worried about that, but the heal continues. And the creep wave comes forward. This could be it. Here comes. Here's the blink. Here's the epicenter. Epicenter goes down. Might jump down. The heal pops on everybody. And there's still live jackals. Ulti not able to slow it down. Melee barracks falls. DD up on Night Stalkers. They're now pursuing after Windrunner. And a good ulti from Queen of Pain. Might catch two. The ice wall and the chain nukes. And uh, even the overgrowth on top of Scandal is going to try to TP out. But that gets the kill. Three heroes dead. Bot Rex is about to be threatened as well as. 333 on the mid lane, right clicking down the range barracks, and Empire calls good game. They had to stop the push with the Enigma, or with the uh, Earthshaker Blink Taker. That was the only chance they had of stopping it. Even going to see Venom ulti on top of Funic. Funic most likely in a die. He picks off the Venomancer, taking a bunch of damage, but healing 16 HP per second. That's like half of the damage that Venom does, and he does get picked off. Queen of Pain picking that one up. But he's going to respawn. Range barracks, or melee barracks, second set of barracks goes down. Art style calls good game, and a huge aggression out of Dare. That's a 17 minute game, followed by a 21 minute game. Dare playing like beasts today. And there are still more games to come. Blue your brain, blinking away. Buildings down, racks remaining. We have two disconnects actually, but not quite over yet. Cold Snap goes down on Enigma, actually. He's actually uh, left the game, so this is an easy kill for him. Nothing happens there. We see Bullier Brain coming forward, trying to stop Funic, but he's got so much regen. I love their item builds. Dare's item builds this game have been excellent. Nice. Leech Seed doing some really great heal up on M. He's going to end up staying alive. There's the Meteor going on the Venno. Is it going to kill? No. Chaos Meteor so hard to use effectively. There's the Blinking, actually. Bullier Brain might get this kill here. Nope. Jackal wants it. He's thinking about Fissuring, but he's going to get slowed and chased away. He's in so much trouble. Jumble Barnett's like, come on guys, let's go. Let's go. About to take the damages if your bully ring gets picked off. Easy kill. Trad's like, let's dive. I got this. He was actually three seconds away from overgrowth, but he doesn't care, so. They're like, okay, let's go. Let's go. Throne taking the damage. Arstel. No! And that throne about to be going down. So once again, Dare. This is the best three guys between Dare and Empire. Um, this is going to determine who gets DTS to spot for the Ghost of League. Password is going to be the same. We'll be back in a second, guys, with game two from this best of three series. If uh, Dare can win the next game, and it looks like they can, they're already 2-0 up on uh, Empire today. If they can win the next game, they're going to be into the tier one Ghost of League, and that is a huge advantage for them. So we'll be back in a second. There's the graph. 22. I'm sorry, the stats. 22 assists on Invoker. 22 freaking assists. Night Stalker 13, 1 and 12, 6, 4 and 17 on Art Style. The only person that didn't get a lot of kills or assists was actually Chen, but he did spend a lot of time solo farming or defending different lanes. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll be back in a second with game two of the Special 3.